Second opening statement, another reason other than the reasons stated, below, in part 2, of why it is impossible to support a monetary existence, an existence of commerce predicated upon money, is when we have technology changing so rapidly that there's no way anyone can make money off of it because it keeps getting replaced by something else. And, so, the seller is tooling and retooling and has to accommodate these rapid changes. But there's no way anyone can make money off of it when it becomes outdated so quickly. This is another reason why commerce and money must die, and remove itself from human existence and be replaced by sharing, the sharing of abundance, the abundance of scientific knowledge applied to the technological improvements of the appliances we use to make life very convenient for ourselves. This is the consequence of commerce being incapable of keeping up with the rapid changes of technological development since commerce is predicated on a form of conservatism, the conservatism of maintaining a tradition of commerce whose lifespan encourages the accumulation of wealth among everyone who participates with the production and the servicing of commercially distributed appliances. So, commerce has been in charge of the distribution of consumer goods and services for quite a while. It served its purpose very well all these years. But it will not be capable of coping with a rapidity of technological development that will outstrip the ability for the massive production lines of today's society to maintain their economic existence in the face of these accelerating changes. This outlook is in alignment with the prognostications of Charlie Lutz when he would periodically state, during his advanced lectures to the practitioners of transcendental meditation, that parents of the near future will have a tremendous challenge keeping up and coping with their children since some of these children will be 2,800 years ahead of their parents. Not only will money and its ensuing commerce become extinct in the near future, but the desire among many of us to fit in to some group or subgroup of our global culture will also expire since no one can fit in when each individual is rapidly changing his or her consciousness along various lines of spiritual and intellectual development. Nor could anyone belong to any group when that group keeps changing its collective outlook so rapidly that the group could no longer maintain a status of having a stable type of character to which individuals could feel secure in their membership to that group. This near future, which I speak of, the age of Aquarius, the age of enlightenment, is not suitable for the bulk of humanity who live here on this planet at this time since most of humanity is quagmired in the lowest states of consciousness whose sole intentions are to relegate all of their decisions to merely two questions of any interest to these people, that is, does activity engage their survival instinct or the instinct to belong to a larger group than what constitutes the scope of any individual self? This persistent narrow focus of merely surviving and merely belonging is superseded by higher states of conscious development to which the humanity of the future will subscribe to and alleviate themselves of this narrow interest of today's society.